So you are telling me I cannot have a boiled egg? No. This is too much work. You get a baked egg or nothing. But I want a boiled egg. Welcome to my morning routine. I want to have a boiled egg. No. no. Oh, see? Who's the queen bitch now? What? <laughs> You're reading comments, haven't you? Welcome back to a new episode of See the Little Things. This week we show you a clumsy docking maneuver and tell you what we learned about it. And we sail down the Spanish coast to the town of Calpe. artwork at the roundabout really represents well what this town is about. Have a look. You have this guy and this girl. <laughs> Feels about right? What do you mean? For some good reason we were back on the boat quite quickly and started to plan our next passage. In the upcoming sails we will make our way down towards Gibraltar and then leave the Med. The coastline is a good mix of very pretty and very not pretty. And we're excited to show you both. We will be honest with you throughout the upcoming videos. So we cleaned up the boat to an acceptable state of cleanness, which is good for sailing now. It is 1.30, so yeah, to go. And in case you're wondering what this is, I am making sun-dried tomatoes again. These are a bit more difficult because they're bigger than my last ones. I just use small ones and these are like big tomatoes. But I need a bit more sun and, and they're in sight now because we're sailing. The next step is actually going over to the harbor right next to us because they have fuel and they also have water at the fuel dock which we saw yesterday when we went over there with the dinghy. Our first tank is 140 and turns out our second tank is not 130 liters like I thought but 170 and that's the one we're using now so I think we will last at least two weeks with that and then in total we'll do three almost four weeks with our two tanks. Yeah. We're pretty frugal with the water. <laughs> When you approach a fuel dock, usually you are greeted with marineros throwing you their lines from the dock. Hey, Eddie. Yeah. But you never know if they're dealing with another customer or have siesta. So we prepare lines on all cleats anyways. Alex prepared all the lines, he prepared the fenders. He looked at the wind and figured out how best to dock. So that's what we're gonna do now. We see many boats who do not bother because they know their home port or they rely on the rubber of the pontoons. We do not, so we prepare all fenders on both sides. On our first approach to the fuel dock, which is not visible from outside the breakwater, it was full, so we turned around and waited outside. Wind coming from sea would make it hard to linger in place in close quarters. We, just as every other keelboat, have prop walk. That basically means that when we stand still and put the boat in reverse, the first impulse is not going backwards, but going sideways, as the prop shovels water around itself sideways first. It takes a while until we get backwards motion through the water and only then the rudder starts working and we can steer the boat again. For us, we walk to port side and since we have a flat bottom boat, we turn almost 90 degrees until we get moving. Add wind and we are unable to maneuver sometimes. Now look, here we go into reverse and the stern moves to port, which is nice since we get distance to the pontoon. But now we don't get motion through the water, but keep going sideways. Additionally, the wind that comes from the back pushes our bow and works against us. Obviously, we have no chance of leaving the dock going backwards and we just drift sideways. Now, I barely managed to get enough forward motion to push the boat around before we hit the yard on the end, as it is hard to get the bow to move into the wind. If we were in the exact same situation again, we would probably get into backwards gear first with all lines still attached. So we would get some water flowing first. Then we would let go of the bow and push off as hard as possible, let out some of the stern line and swing with it as long as possible before letting go. This way we probably would have made it straight out again. I think it's worth noting that another handicap we had was a dirty hull. We noticed we have less prop walk now since we scrapped and repainted the bottom. Sand castles in the summer 
Fallen leaves in fall Sunshine in the springtime The winter's worst of all The stillness at a red light In a mannequin's grace In the eyes of a thousand strangers I look the other way But you of a train The honesty of a child The steady in the rain Everything about you The good and not so good It's always showing up here I'd forget you if I could But you You're always So we almost crossed the Bay, and we're gonna take out because of uh, the rock of Kalpe. Uh, we don't want to be too close because uh, usually on capes you always get some kind of turbulence and the uh, wind that's quite funky. So we're gonna take out a bit, get some distance to the shore, and uh, enjoy another probably one and a half hours of sailing before we drop in Kalpe. What for lunch? Okay. Actually, it's kind of my lunch dessert. Before I had something really good. I found these crackers at Little here. Of course, boys, every good thing good comes from Little. And they have nice seeds on it and they're very crunchy. And then Little also sells these really nice, all kinds of hummus. They have really nice, nice mixes like with tomato and aubergine or with chili. That one's really good, and those are just really good snacks if you're saving. Grab them from the fridge. And make sure it not gets too hungry. When you tag, there's a lot of speed if you don't do it right, and we never do it right. But we could be quicker. But from 3.9, 3.7, when you then tag, you end up at, I don't know, two knots. How much were we? We were at one and a half. We were at one and a half. <laughs> Another thing we learned along the way is to always use enough turns around the winch as every turn creates more friction and you would be able to hold the Genoa sheet with two fingers. Also, we hold the line with pinky towards the winch. I'd rather lose my pinky than my thumb. We make a habit of pulling the line firmly into the self-tailing clamp and lead the line around the winch once more as a safety turn. In case someone walks up to the deck and accidentally takes the line forward, it does not slip out of the winch and the sheet stays where it's supposed to stay. If you enjoy that kind of information, let us know in the comments, because that will tell YouTube to recommend this video to people you don't know but will likely enjoy this too. Also have a look at our website, we have a booklet you may enjoy reading, link is down below. What happened, Bill? I stacked the flexible water jerry cans. Yeah. And uh, the one that was on the bottom, it leaked because of the pressure of the one that was on top. The bottom one leaked and got into the bilge, the engine bilge actually. 
It was just 20 liters, that's what, two gallons? Actually, you're going to have to take out all the food in the bilges because it's everywhere. I just turned on the bilge pump and it already also pumped out some water and all the cans and all the glasses and all everything with food is in the water right now. <laughs> it's always a good reason to start cleaning, right? Had to do it anyway at some point. Ooh, the hair looks good. I kind of enjoy looking at all these very funny buildings built everywhere along the coast. It's just really fun when you're sailing, but it does give you loads of really cool lights, you know, when the sun's going down or there's clouds over the mountains and you have all these this depth in color and it looks really awesome. And you always have to be quick. It's always just nice for like a minute or two. So I'm gonna see if I can still get it for you. It has something cool though, with the different colors of mountains and this hole in the clouds. Look at it. It's just really, really awesome. Did you make popcorn? No. It's cauliflower. Oh. <laughs> you want popcorn? No. I can make popcorn. It's all right. I have a couple of veggies that need to go and one of them is cauliflower so I chopped it up real small and I want to fry it really really hot so put oil in the pan make it super hot fry it real short mm. and and that's basically all I thought of. <laughs> so I know I want to do something with rice and with fried cauliflower and I have to figure out how to make it tasty for them. Mm. Are you excited about dinner now? <laughs> It'll be good just wait for it. <laughs> so what I cooked up in the end is well the fried cauliflower but I cooked the rice with a lot of curry powder and some garlic and ginger and so it has a little bit more of taste salt of course also and then I fried that in the pan afterwards again with garlic and onion that was fried and I added two chopped tomatoes and a little bit of tomato paste and water and then some more curry and in the end I threw three eggs in two and a half because half of it blended under the pan on the fire <laughs> and then I just stirred it and put the cauliflower on top with a little bit of sesame seeds and I'm very curious if this is uh, any good Taste it. Oh, it's actually really nice. It's good, huh? Yeah. Surprisingly good. Only way you can make me eat cauliflower. No, a while ago I made it too. Did I put it in the the risotto? Yeah, maybe you you treat me like a toddler. Yeah, I just <laughs> I hide it in the food and then you like it. <laughs> mm. Now I'm getting stronger and stronger. Yeah. Well, enjoy, babe. And of course, the most important ingredient of all, homemade hot sauce. That's already in there too. It's not that spicy though, so you can add quite some. No, you can. It's nice. really good stuff. Yeah. Next week, we climb the rock of Kalpe, where we try to improve our thumbnails, because we obviously all suck right. at these. Alright, thumbnail time. No, wait, do it again. Do I get those clicks now? Mm. Oh, you're really sweaty. <laughs> and we make our way west. Subscribe, okay, bye bye.